Back now on this special edition of Try It Today as we tell about the uh, state of public education in the state of North Carolina. We've heard already from uh, Dr. June Atkinson, state superintendent, and now let's uh, hear from two special guests who are going to tell us about career and technical education. Immediately to my right, Joanne Honeycutt is director of career and technical education for the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction. Made the trip down from Raleigh by way of Asheville. She's all over the state, as is the superintendent. Next to her is our good friend Ken Simon, who's been on the show before. He's Assistant Superintendent of Instructional and Student Services at Winston-Salem for Scythe County Schools. Welcome to both of you. Thank, Thank you for having us. Uh, Joanne, I'm going to start out with you. There was an email you sent me one day, and I seem to remember a phrase that was on there in quotes, and it said, Pathways to Prosperity. And I went to try to look that up and understand. Tell me about Pathways to Prosperity. What does it mean, and how does this support student services? Pathways to Prosperity is a North Carolina initiative that follows a Harvard Graduate School report and is in pilot in North Carolina with Jobs for the Future. It really is about designing instruction so students have many pathways and many choices. It plays on the idea that a four-year university education may not be for every student, but every student should be prepared with the academic and technical skills that give them choices. And those choices lead to pathways with family sustaining wages, high skill, high demand careers that help them be successful adults. So you're looking long term, not just for right now, but ahead, uh, you know, and how the, this might impact our economy for our state and, and uh, the economy of families and everything. And Ken, I know you're shaking your head. Yeah, why, why, is, why is career and technical education such an important opportunity for young people? I think it's important because it allows students to take what they learn in the classroom and apply it to the real world setting. And so in a lot of different areas, students are able to be exposed to uh, classes and concepts that ordinarily they wouldn't be exposed to. Uh, Ken, do you think, uh, are there any particular kinds of kids, I don't know, break it down by demographic or whatever, what kind of uh, students uh, should be thinking about career and technical education? Well, we think all students can take CTE classes and because there are a range of courses, there's some kind of CTE course for any kind of student. So whether it's an agriculture course or a business course or a marketing course, students will find a range of courses that will meet their interests in their career. Well, well now that leads me to an interesting question, uh, Joanne. When, if I'm a student and I, I'm interested, let's say as Ken said, I'm interested in agriculture. Maybe my family is in agriculture. Um, but CTE doesn't necessarily preclude me from, from getting all the, the great as I say, nutritional things I need, you know, the reading, the writing, the arithmetic, and all that stuff. How do they complement each other? Well, that is, again, one of the ideas around the Pathways Initiative. The Future Ready Core, which are the state's graduation requirements, give students the opportunity for at least six electives. And students choose those electives any way they wish. So your agriculture courses could be part of that standard course of study. We also know that career and technical education has done a lot of work in integ integrating those academic skills, that applied math, reading for information, locating information, into those technical subjects. Can you give me an example? I don't want to put you on the spot. We didn't rehearse this, but can you give me like just one example of how maybe it's, it's integrated? Uh, you or Kenny, the one. What are, you, what are you thinking? Well, a quick one, back to your agriculture example, is in animal science, stu students learn to figure feed rations to have the correct nutritional balance and feed. It's an extension or an application of ratios and proportions in mathematics. And you have a pretty good number of folks that are in, students in CTE. I mean, is there a per certain percentage, or do you track that at all, how many kids are in that? Or? We, we do know how many students in the district. In Winston-Salem for Scythe County Schools, about 84% of our middle school students have taken a CTE course. That high? About 94% of our high school students. So we know that a lot of students are taking CTE courses. Things have really changed over the years. When I came up in the 50s and early 60s, I mean, there was uh, shop classes and drafting and things like that. And it, it wasn't, the, the offerings weren't that wide ranging. But that's not so anymore. No, it's not. I mean, you've got everything. We, we've quoted the agriculture example, but there's a couple more. I mean, you can name, you can take an hour naming them, right? I could. And many of the offerings but that we But don't take have, an hour. Well, I won't. Yeah, go ahead. But the offerings are there in response to what local business and industry tell school leaders that they need. So it could be tailored. In other words, if we know there's an industry that makes a certain product, can, are you going to work with them? Absolutely. I think in our community, our CTE folks, and uh, I'll just take a minute to say our CTE staff, does a really good job from our directors to our teachers 
And they work really closely with our Chamber of Commerce and industry leaders to see what's out there and how we can put students in internships and other kind of job opportunities. All right, Ken, I want you and Joanne to stick around for just a second. I want to continue this discussion. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right